quiet. Here comes the human. I can see that, Dalen sneered. Well then shut up. The both of us hunkered down on the cliff edge, prone and overlooking the great frozen over hellscape before us. I'm going to need all the details I can get. You just need to do your job. I will. She was quite pushy. Now shut up. Below our view, the prison gang was rowdy. I mean, they were always rowdy, but now they were violently rowdy. They stomped their feet on the ice, partly to keep warm and partly because they were excited. Dalen smiled, her gray skin and small horns somehow blending in rather nicely with the tundra rock background. Those savages might just eat the human before we can get to it. I shuddered at the thought. Don't say that. I've seen it. You stay a couple of years on this godforsaken prison planet, and you see a lot of things. Well? I tightened up my jacket. There was no such thing as too many layers here. Don't blame me for not wanting to stay any longer than I need to. Oh, I'm getting off this planet with or without you. She gave me a hard look. I could feel those eyes of hers jab right into me. She had a strange intensity to her. I guess a prison planet can do that to someone. You better not be lying about how sharp you are. All right, shut up. I hear them. I wish I was lying about how sharp I was. Decades of brainwashing and the Galactic Special Forces has its positives, sure. But I'd say it's rather heavier on the downsides. Even if they'd kick me out and abandon me, their mark could never leave my mind. I don't hear shit. She adjusted to lay low in the ice. I just hear all those idiots yelling. Shut it. The crowd was a smattering of different aliens. We all were. I was a Drexy, one of those little blue-skinned devils that come from a backwater planet that I never got to know the name of. The Empire took a bit too much pleasure plundering our youth for talented killers. There, Dalen pointed. Coming from one of the small ice valleys, a line of gang members began pouring out, all carrying one long interconnected chain. One by one, they chanted and walked out, all the way until they finally tugged the prize out into the open white field. There she was, a human. She was small, had a shaved head, and, most noticeably, wasn't wearing any thick coat or multiple layers, nothing to protect her from the cold, nothing at all. Of course, that's why we were all after her. Humans. Little heat engines. Invaluable on a frozen planet. Huh. I rubbed my chin. They're smaller than I thought. You've never seen a human? Of course not. You? She shrugged. A couple? Something was off in the way she said that, but I didn't have time to pick apart useless details. Watch. I was already taking mental notes. She's our way out of this hellscape. Don't miss anything. A large and horned alien lugged out behind, towering over the others. He was voracious and dragon-like, standing on two reverse joint legs. He had eyes that looked as empty as ice caverns. Listen, he roared. Listen up, I balked. That's the captain? Star Snow, she scoffed. That's his little pet. They call him Mouse. Wouldn't hurt a soul, that thing. Pardon me for not believing her. The crowd quitted down under the bellows of Mouse, and out from behind him, a little bug-like six-armed creature came out. His back was curved and had a little shell on it. He was strange, wearing a tall, torn-up top hat and with dozens of scraps tied to his chest fashioned to look like war medals. My soldiers, my hollowed soldiers. His voice was a squeak in the wind. I have brought to you all another wondrous spoil of war, a gift from the greatness of my war mind. The aliens all crossed their arms in the air and chanted out together, Blessed is the war mind! Blessed is the war mind! I gave Dalen a concerned look. She shrugged. You'd be a nut too if you were stuck here for a couple of decades. You're not a nut? I am. Just not one of those kinds of nuts. Insanity should be a private matter, in my opinion. The captain continued. We have, for our grand army, perhaps the greatest weapon on the whole planet. A human, a living engine. Roars and claps filled the air, and the dainty little human just stood with her head down, watching with those dark eyes of hers. There was something beyond those eyes, 
Something hiding under the surface. My instincts wouldn't let me shake it off. Sergeant Dreg, he continued. A rotund, fat alien came up. He, too, was covered in those ridiculous pieces of metal scrap, just not as much. He had a ridiculous fake mustache that seemed plucked from some poor blonde creature's fur and carried himself with heavy regard. Yes, sir, he spouted out in a weak voice. For victory, every soldier gets an additional five minutes in the lungs. Five whole minutes. Of course, sir. That really brought the crowd up to a rapture. They reached a fever of excitement, shoving and screaming. The captain was one of the few gang leaders on the planet who controlled a hotspot, little rooms where steam sneaks up from the core of the awful planet. The rooms were never big, and hot was subjective, but they were the only places that could offer reprieve from the terrible cold, especially when the storms got bad. Following this, the captain raised a proud and dramatic hand. With this human, after we're done with it, we'll have the power of 20 hot spots. More cheers, more excitement. Sure, Dalen smiled, speaking slowly. Sure you will. Let's not get cocky. Cocky is the fun part. The fun part is getting the hell out of here. My training constantly bit at my mind. It was a terrible hand choking me and I couldn't help but resist stupid thoughts and plans. Cocky kills. The captain paced around his human prize, her various chains and restraints in stark contrast to his grand and ridiculous regalia. He put one of his small hands up to her forehead, smiling as he did. Hot as a tank engine! Incredible! He turned around in a snap. Where's my engineer? An ominous wind took over the crowd as he spoke. Everyone hushed and stepped back. From the cracks of one of the looming cliffs, high up above everyone, scary close to us, if it wasn't on the other side of the field, some spindly and horrid thing crawled out, like a large spider made of scale and rock. An eight-legged monstrosity carefully made their way down the wall towards them. Well over ten feet tall, it even dwarfed the mouse. It came right up to the small captain, various eyes focusing in, and four little mandible-like arms tucked in close to its bulbous torso, all anxiously rolling over themselves. This is it? Its voice was dreadfully excited. This is the human. The crowd was uneasy with the presence of the creature, only the captain seemed to be unbothered. Yes, yes. He swelled his chest. We will use its heat to power our army, yes? If the creature could have licked its lips. I'm sure it would have. So many things can be done with that body. So, so many. Hot-blooded, how rare. How so, so rare. Not many hot bloods left in the galaxy. There it is. Dalen winced. It's just as bad as the rumors. It looks horrible. Those things are called ice terrors. They're native here, but they're not intelligent beasts. They usually just prey on straggling prisoners in the outer crags, but this one, it's different. The rumor is it was experimented on by the Empire, an attempt at making this hellhole an even greater hellhole. Make the local predators even smarter. Exactly. Because this place isn't awful enough, I loosened up my shoulders. Well, let's not fuck this up, and we won't have to worry about it anymore. Well, have you seen what you need to see? My eyes focused, I worked over each member of the crowd, each strange and eclectic beast that inhabited the large snowfield before us. I nodded, trusting my instincts. As much as I can. I want better than that. You want the truth, and that's the truth. Don't tell me what I do and don't want. How about you handle your shit, and I handle mine? She scowled, glaring at me as if the resulting silence or awkwardness could intimidate me into saying more. You don't know what's at stake here. You've only been here a week. If we fuck up kidnapping that human. She looked down to the ice and became lost in her thoughts. I don't fuck up. You obviously did somewhere if you're here. Well, fair point, but I wasn't going to tell her that. Below us, the spider horror had wrapped the human in more chains and dragged her away. The captain and his mouse had also already left, leaving the crowd to disperse on their own and do what everyone tries to do in this awful place, not freeze. 
All right. Dalen backed away from the edge and stood up. Ready? I double-checked my bags and supplies. All of the gear was worn and old spec, and I couldn't help but scowl at it. Mm, I suppose. Hey. She was scanning the bleak horizon. You know how long all of that shit took me to gather? I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I stood up beside her, the calmness of a mission already starting to cover me. Lead the way. We navigated down twisting passages and crags of ice. The planet was one giant maze of rock and hell, only sporadically interrupted by large, desolate snowfields. Most gangs hid out in cavern chambers, the only safe spots from the horrible wind. We slipped around various poor souls shivering in corners or already frozen. I'd found out they had a name for that, for when you finally gave up and just let the ice take you, they called it taking the deal, accepting death's trade in the hopes you go to hell and feel warmth again. It seems most took the deal at around the year mark. The rest were, as Dalen said, nuts. Dalen moved a conspicuous boulder covering the entrance to a hallway buried into one of the mountains. At the end of a long and narrow ice tunnel, lit only by the dimmest of lights, was a stoic rock door. Dalen came up close to it and knocked lightly. Ajax, Ajax, you still there? Rustling came from behind the door, followed by what sounded like a couple of falls and tumbles. Then, the door slowly unlocked and unveiled a little blind mole-like creature. He wore a hard little metal helmet and covered himself in as many shirts and coats as possible. The shirts had holes and all draped so long that it looked as if he were wearing a layered dress. Dalen! He faced slightly away from her. Are you ready? Right here, Ajax. He turned, speaking in a gentle, careful voice. Oh, he <laughs> Sorry, is it time? The tunnel is ready? He put a little clawed hand up on the wall, caressing it lightly. Oh, yes, it's ready. I felt the terror enter into his chamber with the human just before you arrived. All is ready. All is right. She looked back at me. All right, I've got you here. Now you get us the rest. You're not done yet. I've played my part perfectly so far. I'm going to finish it perfectly, too. I nodded, taking long and deep breaths. My skin crawled and writhed with action, and my veins shuddered with anticipation. It was mission time. I looked down at Ajax. Show me the tunnel. Yes, yes. He motioned me into his squat burrow and pointed to one of the various cylindrical holes in the rock. Follow that for 326.32 yards, and you'll reach the end. After that, just... He tapped the back of his claws on the rock, phantomiming, smashing them. Should be thin enough to break right apart. All a good, all right. I said nothing else, no goodbyes, no good lucks, just head first into the hole to start my crawl. It was large enough to fit me prone just fine, but too small to squat along. I shimmied my way all the way through the darkness and curves until I reached the end. And there, I too could hear it. I could hear that creature toil away behind the rock. So, so sweet. Blood so sweet. Even its muffled voice was chilling. The human will make a battery. What a grand and great battery. So, so powerful. Yes, so, so. I put my ear up to the cold ice, patient and keen to act at just the right moment. The human will be put to a machine, and machine will draw heat from the human. So, so sweet blood. Oh, so sweet. Come on, I thought to myself, feeling the chill rock start to work its way towards my bones. Don't make me wait too long. About right when I expected, a low rumble went off in the distance. It was the distinctive shake of an explosion, a very distracting explosion. All right, Dylan, you're certainly proving yourself quite the ally. Ah! I heard the thing's legs tap on the hard ice floor. Creatures want to pull me away from the great blood battery. They can't see the holy wonder. It scurried out of its little chamber, chasing down the origin of the noise with rapt predatory instinct. I wasted no time. As soon as I was sure that it was out of earshot, I smashed the thin ice. Immediately, I tumbled down into the laboratory, falling onto its hard ice floor and taking in my surroundings. It was a large room, round and completely carved out of the ice and rock by the terror. Horrid devices and mangled metal contraptions hung about by string and chain. 
Blood stains littered the floor like patchwork patterns, and the smell was enough to make me want to faint. A growl sounded off from the corner. I turned and saw her, tied up to a rolling contraption and already being drained of blood. She stared at me, hard and angry, her mouth jammed shut by a metal muzzle. Bingo. I ran over quickly. Without taking the time to be gentle, I ripped out all of the tubes and needles draining her, letting her blood scatter across the floor. I looked back at the door from sheer anxiety and continued moving. Swiftly, I shot off all of her bonds, favoring speed over discretion. Look, you're go- She slammed a fist into my chin and jumped off the rack. I backed up in surprise and dizzy stupor, feeling the light blood drip from my face and looking up in disbelief. Are you- are you serious? She growled from underneath her muzzle, standing in a ready, tense crouch across from me. I pointed to the door. You realize that thing is going to come back in here any moment and kill the both of us, right? Your best bet is coming with me. She looked at the door, then back at me. Without any hint of exaggeration, she nodded and shrugged as if to say, Sounds like your problem. I raised my gun. All right then, easy way or hard way. You choose. She chose all right. All of a sudden, she started breathing heavily, almost panting. It was without a doubt purposeful. I could see the mission in her eyes. As her chest rose and fell quickly, I began to step back, a little stunned. Stars. She was steaming. Vapor floated off of her like little puffy clouds, hot as a furnace. Her face went red, and her skin began to sweat. Even in the horrid and frigid cave, she was commanding her body to produce more heat, and a lot of it. Too much of it. I don't know what you're doing, but we need- She darted off in one direction, faster than I could keep up with. I moved my gun to follow her. But before I could pull the trigger, she picked up a bloody knife and lunged at me. I had to lower the gun to evade the swipe, barely skimming by. I didn't have time for another thought. She jabbed again and again, furious and with absurd speed. She kept me on the back foot, the heat rising off of her like a fire. I'd been trained since before I had memory, killed more than I cared to admit, and was subject to every ounce of killer instinct that the Empire had to offer. And I was still too slow. She caught me once, slashing open my chest and sending me reeling to the floor. I rolled and came quickly to my feet, but she met me with a foot of her own and sent me straight back into a wall. I raised up my gun, but she kicked it away as well, casting it across the floor. Stop this! She jabbed at my head, planting the knife in the ice as I hardly scurried off to the side. We need to leave, damn it! Then we both heard it. That dreadful awful skittering of spider legs on rock. We turned to the door and saw it casting a long and ominous shadow on us, the terror. Its eyes were wide and excited, and those little mandible hands of it shuddered with anticipation. What have we here? A thief of the bloody battery? So, so sad. I pointed to her, upset more than anything. This is your fault, she growled. The terror ecked past the door and straightened out its legs, imposing on us like a deadly mountain. Punishment for disturbing the holy process is death. I will deliver the captain your wretched bones. My gun was about eight yards away. I had to grab it. I pushed the woman towards the spider in a great shove while she was distracted and dove towards my gun. The spider charged my way but was met by the pissy and stumbling woman. She carried her momentum and deftly navigated between its legs, causing the creature to confuse itself and try to snag her. I picked up the rifle from the ground and fired off its clip into the creature. The room lit up with the awful sound of exploding gunfire. The hot muzzle flashes reflected off of the blue ice around us, turning the room into a bright bulb of battle. Yet each crashing bullet just idly clicked off the hard carapace and fell to the ground in a pitiful arc. Shit! No, 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 no! The creature turned back towards me and lunged. I jumped away in barely enough time, reloading as I skid under a metal table. I turned to face the beast just as the woman jumped from a chair and slashed at its eyes with her knife. She caught one, causing it to hiss and skitter back with swipes of its hands. The eyes? I asked her. Aiming my weapon as it recovered, she growled, but I took it as an approving growl. I planted five careful shots into its face, each one taking out another one of those black voids. It screamed and wretched up with horrible pain. You think all I have is sight? It jumped over towards me with awful speed and kicked me away with one of the legs, 
hurtling me into the ground. You weaklings all smell of wretched fear. I tried to aim and fire more, but I had to move. The thing wasn't giving us a single second. It would swipe and dive, darting from one of us to the other, not giving either enough time to breathe. I could hear more explosions ring out in the background. That was Dalen's last-ditch effort to alarm me to leave and give me more time. We had to get the hell out of here. Just as the terror dove at the woman, instead of dodging, she dove back, heading right into it. It went to grab her, and she ducked her head off to the side just slightly enough to have it smash into her muzzle and bust it, while also sending her twirling towards the ground. She slammed into the ice, covered in her own blood from the strike, but screamed out curtly, The mouth! I didn't waste a moment. I raised my gun and stared the beast down as it charged me. Its mouth dropped open for one faint moment just to catch air, and it was just enough for me to let loose one flying bullet. The lead crashed into its mouth and sunk into the back of its neck, causing it to reel back and hurl up purple icor blood. Gah! It swiped at its own head in pain. Ah! I looked down at the woman, both of us breathing heavy and beaten. Can we go now, damn it? She carefully stood up and wiped the blood off her jaw. It's not dead. Not my fucking question. I was rather angry at this point. I don't think a planet buster would kill that thing. I'm not trading one prison for another. I pointed to the beast. Me or it? That simple. Neither. Come on. I think she'd already proved I wasn't able to take her unwillingly. What do you want me for? I don't have time for this. Answer me. I shifted on my feet. Dalen had been sparse with the details, and I honestly hadn't wanted to know. I was just happy to have some sort of plan for escaping. Beggars can't be choosers. I nodded my head. To get off this planet. Another blood engine. I don't know. A noise came from the hole I fell from. What the hell is going on? It was Dalen. She was covered in black smut and blood. She'd obviously been having quite the time herself and was getting tired of waiting. Let's go! She dropped from the hole and pointed to the hallway. Seconds, people! I'm not wasting one of them! Let's go! What do you want me for? The woman was stoic, unbothered by the obvious impending doom. Dalen looked at me, then back at her, wide-eyed. Seriously? I shrugged. I already tried the forceful route. No dice. This was your job, damn it! The woman growled. Answer me. A device, she admitted with no hesitation. One made to harness your heat and hopefully get us off this planet. That's not it. I was getting antsy. We have to go, guys. The creature was still coughing and choking on its own blood, but each one could easily be the last it needed to clear its lungs. Not until she says the rest. Rest of what? I'm not the only one, am I? I was starting to catch on. What? Dalen sneered, tensing her neck. Obviously, one human isn't enough to power a ship. Dalen? She's the last one we need. One more heat battery, and we have all the humans we need to leave the atmosphere. I blinked, a little stunned and at a loss. What do these batteries do? Kill us. The woman was horrifically calm. Slowly and painfully, I've seen it. I've been running away from it my whole life. I tilted my head. Whole life? We'll all die on this planet anyway. Dalen looked at me with wild eyes. Shoot her in the legs and we'll carry her quickly. I hesitated, looking at the woman and her small frame. So much power was held there. So much energy and potential. And yet, so much pain. Come on! Dalen screamed. Don't tell me the trained assassin is having second thoughts. Do you know the dozens that have died just to get one human? Do you know the sacrifices made? The terror screamed, clearing out what sounded like the last of its blood. The woman stared at me. I'd sooner die on my feet than let my life be sucked away. A strange twirl of emotions took over me, and bright, vibrant memories of my past caught up to me like the flashes of grenades. Without thinking, I wrapped my hands tightly around my gun. I know what it's like to be used, to be nothing more than a tool. Dalen sighed. You're kidding. 
She looked back at the creature, then to me again. You have to be ruthless to survive here, ruthless! I matched eyes with the woman, the both of us now in a deep sense of understanding. <laughs> ruthless. Some things in life your soul decides. Some things you cannot fight. I can do that. Without a moment's hesitation, I shot Dalen in the knees, sending her to the ground with screams. Just then, the terror turned its head to us with rabid hunger, mouth dripping in its own purple innards. The woman nodded to me, and we both took off through the entrance, flying through the hallways amongst the screams and sounds of approaching soldiers. Dalen screamed from the back room, her shrill and angry voice reaching my bones. You idiot! You complete idiot! The terror screeched, and I can only imagine what it did next. But I didn't care, nor did the woman. I knew that. We were charging headfirst into battle now. We'd have to kill. We'd have to fight. And it wouldn't be easy. But that's all right. The both of us understood now. We both knew in our very souls. The fact was clear. We would find our freedom on this prison planet, and the both of us wouldn't settle for anything less than the real thing.